Well, 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 good morning, guys. What's going on? All right, straight to the point today. Let's talk about life. Let's talk about opportunities. Let's talk about things that you've gotten in your life, things that you had in your life, things that you've lost. I figured if I'm going to have a vlog, instead of being like other people that do vlogs and they might talk about their life, but when they talk about their life, there's a lot of sugar coating. There's a lot of, you gotta watch a thousand episodes and decode everything to try to get points to figure out how these people really are. So basically what you're doing is just watching video after video after video, and then you start noticing things that people do, and that becomes part of their normal, and then you rationalize like, okay, well, I've read this person, I've seen everything they do, this is part of their true personality, and this is how they really are. Me, I'm very transparent. I wear everything right on this arm. I, uh, in my life, I've just learned that if you're more truthful and you just say what the hell's on your mind, it's easier and better for you to get through any type of situation, to get better in life, to get better in jobs. Also, friendships are a little easier now with friendships with me i'm so goddamn fucking honest that i get into a lot of arguments and a lot of fights and i feel guilty for a lot of things that i do but i just feel like it's easier to be honest than it is to sugarcoat anything or to not say something so a lot of times people will be like holy fuck you're saying a lot of shit and if somebody's saying you're talking shit and you're like in person with that person, it usually means you're talking the truth. You're saying something where other people won't say it because usually they feel bad or they don't wanna hurt someone's feelings or they just don't have the balls. And this is nothing about mas my masculinity. It's not me trying to be ballsy or tough or anything. It's just, I, I know what it's like to lose people in my life. I've had death so much in my life that I don't got enough time to tiptoe around bullshit i just like to get to points it's especially with age i've just realized i don't have enough time for anything time is precious time is so goddamn precious and you don't get time back like the time that you're gonna spend watching these videos that i make that are like i've been going on an average of like 15 to 20 minutes i appreciate that i appreciate that you guys are taking the time to watch these i also appreciate life in general so here it goes talking about myself all right my name is ricky ray lopez i was born in great falls montana i was born to maria lopez and lee doni uh my dad is a hundred percent native american my mother is half czechoslovakian and half mexican so i'm a half breed as Cher would say um, I didn't have the upbringing that other people had. I was in and out of foster homes from when I was born till I was, I don't know, I think it was off and on until I was six years old. And I finally, I don't want to go into details of everything that ever happened to me. I just want to say that I was adopted and I got adopted by my grandparents uh, off and on. So I think they took me at six months and then they took me at two years. And then eventually they fully adopted me by the time that I was six years old. Uh, I also have a little brother. Well, I had a little brother and me and him both were in and out of group homes and foster homes. And um, he ended up staying with my aunt and uh, my sister and I ended up staying with my grandparents. Now, the hardest part about, if there's anybody out there that's ever been adopted, the hardest part about being adopted is feeling accepted. And what's deeper than that is when you're adopted by your family, it's even worse. So if you're six months old and a year and two years old, and then eventually at six years old, your grandparents adopt you, you're not gonna know your real mother or your father the way normal kids know their mother and father and so I've always called my grandparents mom and dad and I've called my mother Maria so I've never ever ever considered her my mother I've just considered her 
like I know that she's my mother, but she's not my mom. My grandparents brought me up. So that goes into a little tug of war with trying to be accepted and also being a part of a family. So I am the youngest of 17 kids. Yeah, 17 kids. There is, I believe it is 10 girls and seven boys. Now, obviously it's my grandparents, so that's my aunts and uncles, but since my mother and father adopted me, that makes those guys my brothers and sister. Brothers and sisters, and this is where the technicality of craziness gets in, where if obviously I consider them my brothers and sisters, they don't because it's their sister's kid. It turns into a jog of mess. You get older, all you want to do is be accepted. So my whole fucking life has been, I want attention and I want people to accept me for who I am. The older I got, I realized, all right, everybody has their own feelings. Everybody accepts things the way they accept it. So they're not going to accept you. So the ones that do accept me, I love the shit out of you. The ones that don't accept me, I, sorry, I can't do anything about it. And when it comes to feelings and you have 17 brothers and sisters, nobody's going to agree. Nobody's going to like anybody else's opinion. Everybody's trying to fend for themselves. So that's kind of like my upbringing. My whole point of doing this is I've watched a couple vlogs and I've just felt like I'm not trying to be mean or do anything, but I feel like they're fucking fake. I, you don't talk that way. No one talks that way. The way I'm talking is my normal voice. I'm looking into a stupid ass phone, having a conversation, reaching out to the people that are watching this and then trying to reciprocate the fact that there's really nobody here. And I'm trying to see and think what you guys are looking like or how you guys are receiving how I'm talking. Sola and I tell you guys that I have 17 brothers and sisters. I'm pretty sure I got this. That's usually what I get. Then there comes the questions of, is there, is it stepbrothers? Is it stepsisters? Is there, how many dads is there? No, it's one mom, one dad. Both of them like sex. So then you have 17 kids. I... I just watch other people and I just feel like there needs to be more truth in these. Uh, a lot of them are very gimmicky. A lot of them do things. Obviously, I'm friends with people that are really huge in this industry that do vlogging and it's nothing against them. I obviously know I'm so small, they're never gonna watch these, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna cater to the people that actually watch these. I'm gonna cater to the people that actually wanna learn something and actually have a conversation and maybe relate to the people that they subscribe to or relate to situations that people talk about so that's like a semi small part of my upbringing uh the part of my upbringing is if you're a part of a family that's that big how do you find whatever it is to be a part of your life well, I found after having 17 brothers and sisters, there's multiple personalities and there's multiple things that people have done in, my, in their lives. So I live by example. So if you have a ex super extreme family that's super big, you see all these other people. There's 16 people before me. They all make decisions and they've all did things with their lives. Some I like, some I don't like. So I just nitpicked those things and I was like, I don't wanna do this, I'll never do this, I don't wanna be like you but I like that you do this. I see that you're doing this, but I would have done it this way. So I took all these people's lives, this big, huge circle, and then right down here at the bottom is me. And I said, this is who I want to be. I don't want to do what you do. I don't want to be like you. I don't want to dress like you. I don't want to live like you. I don't want to end up like you. So I took that big, huge circle and I found myself. And myself ended up being now. <laughs> You can look at me and you can think I have the greatest life in the world or you can feel pity for me or you can be like, oh, this guy's this way, but he's really this way. Uh, well, to be very honest with you, this is probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. I've had multiple low points, multiple ones. I'm never trying to be a victim and I've never wanted people to feel sorry for me. It's just I've had people feel sorry for me because of situations that I've had in my life. I've had multiple deaths, few murders. Now, dealing with murder and death is two different situations. People, 
people have grandparents and they're not even really close to them and they get really hurt when their grandparents die. But that's kind of natural when your grandparents die. They have a heart attack, die of old age. They've lived their life. Um, people dying by accidents. If I was very morbid, I would say you died because of that accident because of a choice that you made, correct? Now, let's take murder. Murder is something that you don't plan for and murder is something that you can't control. It's a situation that you got yourself into and you end up dying because of the situation. Now, I've had two, but there has been four murders in my life. Now, the two are actually confirmed murders where someone is murdered and you have to find that person and figure out who's the person that murdered that person. Uh, the other one is obviously a crazy situation and that would be my younger brother. My younger brother was, I believe 13 turning 14. Yes, that would be the age. 13 turning 14 and was murdered. And I guess not going into stories or details, uh, every situation like those is, is really tough. What I'm basically saying is if you have someone that dies in your life and you know why they died or you can prepare yourself for that, it's not easy. I can't just tell you like, hey, that's easy, but I will tell you that's 20 times easier than losing somebody to somebody's finger that pulled the trigger to somebody. That's That part's really tough. Uh, my whole point of kind of talking to this is I've had a really crazy bad life, but it's nothing compared to other people. Everybody has a bad life. And I always just think about it like, okay, Ricky, you've had two years in your life where four people have died. And out of those four people, only one of those people died because of being old and natural occurrences where the other two were murdered and then the other one we don't know if he was murdered or he hung himself or I mean shot himself I apologize so situations like that are very tough and if there's people on here that watch this and know me and grew up with me they could have sympathy for me or they could have what some people have where they don't understand it and they don't know what it's like to live in that kind of crazy situation. Uh, basically what I really want to say to people is, <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting so deep on death, but I just want to say, be lucky who you are, all right? If you're poor, you're poor, okay? You know exactly what you need to do and what can happen. You're already poor. There's nothing else worse that can happen. If the situation is, is you're asphyxiated and you're stuck on the situation of being poor, no matter what you do in life, you're already poor. That's your lowest point. All you can do is go up. So you need to look at your life and say, all right, these are the things that I need to fix and these are the things that possibly I could do to make this better. Now, we can go on the other spectrum. Let's talk about somebody being super rich. You can't buy being happy. It's a feeling, it's something that you are. So you have to find it in yourself to figure out, all right, what do I need to do? What kind of situation do I need to get myself into so I can fix how I feel? And I guess when it comes to it, it's everybody's mental state. I look as if I'm always happy. I'm not always fucking happy. That's a mask I wear. I've always been the center of attention. I. I could remember the first time where I wanted to be the center of attention and it was in first grade and I remember a fifth grader and a group of guys <clears throat> telling me that there was these G.I. Joes in this pipe and I collected G.I. Joes when I was a kid and I wanted G.I. Joes. So I went to this pipe and I was reaching my hands in there and they got all black and dirty and nasty and all the fifth graders were just sitting there laughing at me and I felt fucking stupid but it clicked in my, in my head. I'm like, hey. They're laughing at me. They're not laughing with me. 
but I can make them laugh with me and change the scenario. So I remember pulling my arm out of that pipe and it was all black and dirty and I took it and I rubbed it all over my face and I started swinging my arm around and I just started making a scene. And then all these kids went from like laughing at me and picking on me to like, the fuck is this guy doing? And then just being entertained by that fact and then it, it just switched, something in my head switched that like, okay, well, if I can take any scenario bad or horrible or good, all I got to do is just make myself happy out of this situation because there's nothing I can do to control it. It's already happening. And so those kids from that moment on, all I knew is I just had to act like a clown. Now, deep down, I guess that's suppressing what's happening to you, but it's really worked for me in my life. I have gone from being shy and shallow and depressed to finding this person and being 36 years old you know who that fucking person is montana ricky that's my online persona that's this guy that's the happy dude that's that guy that goes out there and says things that's the guy that rides bikes that's the guy that's famous or well known on instagram or whatever not you you end up finding yourself the whole point to this is Whatever situation or whatever you're in, there's always a way of finding yourself. Now, I know I'm jumping from one place to another. I'm talking about murder. And then I'm all of a sudden talking about being a class clown. But these are these are things. These are these are choices. These are what happen in life. I look at people and when I compare myself to somebody else. I always look for underlines. I don't go and say, hey, this person has a really nice house. This person has a boat. They have a loving family. I always look deeper and I go, hey, man, what are they missing? Do him and his wife really get along? Do his kids like him? Is that boat just there to make him feel better because he really can't spend money? So he's looking to spend money on some big object. It's everybody's life's different. Everybody's been through something Everybody has something to offer and everybody has issues. Now, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. I'm not some guy that thinks he has an answer. These are all opinions. I always feel like when I'm talking this way or I get around people that like to just argue, they always think that my opinions, that I think they're correct. They're not fucking correct. Anything that I have to say is just situational and it's something that I've been through. And I do get into a lot of arguments with people because I like to voice my opinion. Where other people don't want to say anything, I always say something. So going back to, I don't know why I went with death or I went really fucked up and talked about murder in my life. I just wanted to say, going full circle through this, all of this, you know what one thing's been in my life, my whole life, besides friends, family and acquaintances has been my bike my bike has always been there for me i it's an inanimate object but it's where i put all my pain my suffering my sorrow it never talks back it never hates on me it doesn't like me it's just an object that's there to help me and it, it sounds corny but it's very therapeutic to just go out and ride your bike because you don't think about the problems in your life you're not dealing with the problems in your life you're just going into your own fantasy world putting music in hanging out with some friends riding your bike and it's a kid thing sometimes it's nostalgic and it brings you back to the good times or sometimes it's just something that makes you work and your brain shuts off i i will say this going back to when my brother was killed, you know what I was doing? I was riding my bike and I was getting a ride home and my bike was in the back of my friend's truck and we drove past the house where my brother was killed. And when we were passing that, I remember we were driving, there was ambulance and cops everywhere at this house. And I remember looking to the left and there was this gurney 
and like in the movies there's a white blanket and somebody's getting carried out by two ambulance workers and i remember just saying the most fucking horrible thing i could ever say and i said look one of those fucking assholes got what he deserved now obviously i didn't know anyone was murdered i didn't know anyone was hurt i don't, I don't know what was going on and my hatred was so bad for just drugs and fucking mean people and the way my town was growing up obviously people from bigger cities are like oh you're from great falls montana you don't know what it's like to live in a littler city where big cartel drug tell cartel come to your town and they sell drugs all right that place is 20 times scarier than some fucking big city because in a big city you know where to go and where not to go if you go into California, don't go to fucking Compton at 2 in the morning. Now, if you live in Little Great Falls, it's so fucking small, the bad people are everywhere. Everywhere. So if you take a left on 5th Street, on 6th Street, there could be a fucking crackhead or a dude that wants to kill you. That's the way it is. So I remember seeing that. I remember getting home. And when I got home, I had the worst gut feeling in my life. And I knew someone was dead. And I remember walking through the back door and my mother coming up to me and saying, hey, I need to tell you something. And she's like, your brother just got killed. And I knew at that moment when she told me that, that uh, that person I saw pulling out of the house was my little brother. And that was a block away. And you know, the story gets crazier, go to the hospital. You see things you don't want to see. Oh, I'm getting really crazy with this. You guys probably are not going to like this episode, but I, I feel like I don't talk this way. I, I guess if you got to know me, you would hear this. I... I... <laughs> When you're around this or you've lived this, crying is hard. Feeling sad is hard. When I hear people say that they've had a death in their life, in all honesty, if you want in the back of my head, I always just say, if it's something natural or if it's cancer or if you were there and then the person dies, I always just say, man, I wish I had death that easy. I wish it was easier for me to have that type of death. But that's wrong. I, I shouldn't feel that way. I guess getting to the point of this is life is fucking precious. You get one shot. You get one thing. You guys might ask and seen and been around me and you guys ask, how in the fuck can you talk the way you talk? Guess what? Most of the time in your life, you're going to see a person once. So who gives a shit what you say? Who gives a shit what you do? If you have something that you want to do, go for it. Who cares? You fail, you fail. What's the worst that happens? You go right back to where you were before. So it doesn't matter what you do in this life. All right? It's how you feel at the end of the day. If you were happy with what you did, good. That's the way it is. That's the way it goes, man. The other thing is, is how people constantly use the family thing as a crutch. I'm going to teach you guys something about family, okay? Yes, I, this is my opinion. My opinion is, is family holds you back. And let me give you an example of holding you back, okay? If your brother or sister go out and do something and it's fucked up and it's against you, everybody always does this. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. They're family. It does fucking matter. Those people are fucking assholes. They're ignorant. They're selfish. And they're taking something away from you. And what they're taking away from you is your time. You'll never get your time back. And it doesn't matter. They'll keep doing it. Because guess what? It's family. I have to accept it. Now, you're probably not going to like that if you're in love with your fucking family. Obviously, it's easier for me. Because I can choose who I love in my family. Because it's big enough. But I'm being very honest with you. Don't let anybody hold you back. Don't let death be a factor in your life that holds you back there's nothing you can do it's going to happen people pass away i know that you love them i know they mean something to you i know mine's more morbid mine's crazy my life's different 
And since I've lived through those, my mechanism of coping with them is way different. Let me tell you, having depression and lashing out and doing stupid things and getting yourself in a psych ward and then having a meeting with 10 other motherfuckers that are crazy and psycho and you sit around and you listen to their lives and you listen to what's going on to them, you'll realize like, oh, shit, I might have had this death, but that's not as bad as having to fucking kill someone out in war. Oh, I might have had death, but that's not as bad as watching your mother or father drown or something crazy like that. There's always people out there that have it worse than you. And just think to yourself, life is good. Life is better. It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, old, young. You can always do something different. Me, today, I wanted to talk about this because I want to be truthful with you guys. I want this to become something that is actually something good, something you can learn from. No matter if you like it or you don't like it, I don't give a shit if I'm sitting here talking for 30 minutes. I'm talking for 30 minutes. I don't give a shit. If someone likes this, they'll like it. And they'll leave comments at the bottom and they'll give me their life situation. All right, life's fucking short. Enjoy your life. Take advantage of it. You don't know. Tomorrow definitely isn't promised. But you know what is promised? Whatever actions that you do at this moment, whatever you choose to do, do those things. Don't be afraid to take a chance. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're at right now is the lowest you're going to be at. Yeah, it could go lower once you compare it to this moment. But at this moment, you can only go up. So take a chance. You want to say something? Say it. It doesn't matter. Five years from now, whatever you do, yes, it leads up to get to that point. But it doesn't matter. Little situational things don't matter. So if you love someone, tell them you love them. If you have a crush on someone hit on that person. If you have a problem with someone that you do not like, confront them. Trust me, because in the long run, it's about you, yourself, and that's it. You have to deal with what's wrong up here. You have to try to figure out what's wrong up here. And the only way to do that is to express yourself. Don't hold it all in. If you have someone, a brother or a sister, and they bother you, say what bothers you, because guess what? Once you tell them that, they'll understand it and they'll figure it out. And maybe you can resolve it, finish it, and they'll feel better. That's it. Say what you have to say. In my life, I've always said what I feel. I've always done the complete opposite of what other people did. And I always say things that I should probably not say. But to be honest with you, my fail rate in saying things I shouldn't have said, my success rate is like 80% and that 20%, those are people, those are situations, those are things that didn't have anything that I needed in my life. Do I feel guilty for being honest? Yes, I feel way guilty. I probably feel guilty because maybe there's a few people on here that have touched a nerve and you probably don't like it and you probably don't want to hear it. But sometimes you need to hear it. So if you're watching my videos and you like my videos, you truly like my videos, comment. Tell me something. I want to know. I want to hear what things I talk about that you like. Now, this whole thing coming into a full circle is about BMX because I've gotten where I've gotten because of my bike, because of a little 20-inch bike. But I've also gotten there from things that I've learned. And the things that I've learned in life are not all entirely up to me. They're by people that I've listened to, people that I've looked up to. I had an old friend that was 75 years old and his name was Roger. And that man in the 10 years that I knew him taught me more than my dad taught me. That man, that man made me a better person because that man didn't sugarcoat shit. He looked at me and said, you're a dumb fuck every single time I did something. And I didn't have to prove anything to him. I just had to do things. So guys, if you like this video, like it. If you don't like it, thumbs down. I don't give a fuck. I know it's all a jobbled mess. I don't edit any of this. 
I don't write any of this down. This is purely from the heart. There was a couple times there where I wanted to cry, but I only wanted to cry because when you have things that are bad in your life, you tend to suppress them. And then when you're releasing them, that little egg that you get, that little choke part, it's hard it's hard to let out that little choke part. I hope this gives you guys a little bit of knowing me. I hope it makes you guys like me a little bit more. But I also, also hope it makes you guys think. It makes you guys think that like, hey, there's other people out there that have lived what I've lived. Hey, there's other people out there that have it worse than me. And there is always somebody out there that has it worse than me and you. There's always somebody, okay? Time's precious. Take advantage of your time. Look around and be thankful for things that you have, all right? I'm thankful that I'm 36 and I look this young for 36. I have tons of friends that look old as fuck, but those are the choices that they made. They chose to drink, they chose to do drugs, they chose to smoke cigarettes. I'm not saying don't do those things. I'm saying if you wanna do them, do them. Just know you have consequences for them. I have consequences. I eat unhealthy as fuck. I am the worst for eating. I eat horrible. And that's why I'm getting fat. Gotta live with it. I wanna get better. I wanna get skinnier. Gonna have to do something for it. All right, I'm at a half an hour. I'm thinking now I should have went live and just did this shit live. But I just wanted to have a conversation. I was feeling kind of a certain way because I'm OCD. I hope this got you guys to know who I am. Uh, make sure to like stuff, leave some comments, let me know. Uh, if I touched a chord or I did something, uh, let me know that. If you guys feel like I'm a job old mess and this doesn't make any sense, sorry. I got a little emotional, so I, I don't give a fuck. This is kind of how it's gonna be. And, uh, Make sure to share this on your Instagram stories or, you know, like it or share it on your YouTube. Do the YouTube thing that helps out that way. And hit the notification bell so you guys know when I have new videos. Um, I love all you guys that stay here with me and write in the comments and tell me really good things or DM me on Instagram. It means a lot to me because it shows me that you guys care. And you guys know who you are because you guys always comment on every one of my videos. So, uh, love you guys. Like this video. Uh, I'm gonna go ride my bike because that's how I'm gonna cope with how I feel right now. Ooh. Have a good one, fuckers. <laughs>